Good morning, friends. Myself, Professor M. H. Anaya, and friends, in today's video, we are going to have very good information in connection with how to obtain very high marks in the subject engineering drawing or engineering graphics and it is also sometimes called as engineering visualization friends basically in any of the universities in india generally there will be five to six modules in every question paper and i will let you know through this video what are the important types of questions that are generally asked and what are the important tricks that you should remember and how much of practice is required to score very high marks in this subject friends for your kind information i would inform i would like to inform you in the beginning of this video that i have authored two textbooks on this subject engineering drawing or engineering graphics and these books i will show you one by one this is one of the very important book computer aided engineering drawing wherein you will have hundreds of problem this book was authored by me around 20 years back with the vast experience four decades of service i have this is prescribed as a textbook for the students studying under vtu and is also a textbook for so many private universities etc and similarly friend i have one more book by name engineering drawing both of these books are published by a very highly reputed publishers at new delhi friends now coming to this video you have to be very patient listen every tip i give you every clue i give you every inform important information i am going to give you so do not skip the video anywhere you just go through from the beginning of this video till the end without skipping anywhere in between and you will get at the end some very important tricks maybe in between the explanation also friends our aim is to score very high marks that is the aim of any student and while explaining any of these modules i will tell you what are the tricks required what are the important information you have to gather with you so friends generally there will be five modules like this i have written the particulars name of that points and lines and what are the marks for that and what is the time required etc for example friends you know in karnataka or most of the universities even outside karnataka also say in india we are following first angle projection so to solve any problem on point in first angle projection i have made a video that you can go through whenever you find time if you go through my videos under the link engineering drawing by dr m h annaya you have more than 250 plus videos on this subject engineering drawing alone and i am very sure by going through these videos you will not have difficulty to get 100 out of 100 in the examination friends let me start with these points generally points and lines are clubbed together and you get a question there will be around 5 marks for the projection of points which is a pre requirement to draw the projection of line so without knowing the projection of point you cannot solve problems on projection of line so there are only four problems which you should know if you are following the first angle projection what are they suppose this is the vertical plane you have got that is the wall in front of you the vertical plane 
and my palm can be taken as the horizontal plane and we are placing the object in the first quadrant that is we are following first angle projection so immediately friends whenever you are solving any problem on a line or on a point whatever it may be you should write a reference line called x y mark v p by h p so even marking this x y line and marking v p by h p carries marks in the examination in all these modules friends say this is the first angle projection and this x y line is the line of intersection of v p and h p if the third angle projection we are going to have this written h p above and v p below friends what are the question that can be asked in the first quadrant and even if they are not asking what are the types of the problem you should know in the uh, from the chapter projection of palm friends a point can be on h p where you get the front view on the x y line a point may be on v p where you get the top view on the x y line or the point may be lying on the line of intersection of hp and vp say somewhere here so in that case you are going to get a dash and a front view on top view on the same line and the last one is the point is in space that is in front of vp and above hp so these are the only four position of positions of this point you should know to solve problem on the lines etc now friends i have a video as i told you before please go through that video you will have the complete explanation about this particular points then friends the next question is the projection of lines friends it is a very easy chapter and you should never fail to attempt this that means you have to compulsorily do a problem on this and for this particular chapter or the module i have listed around one dozen problem that is 12 problems and whoever may be the examiner whatever may be the question paper generally if you know this one dozen plus problems which are available in my youtube video channel you will not have any difficulty to score 15 out of 15 and in this video i will also tell you which are those important questions on this chapter which you should know friends here in this chapter 12 problem they will tell you some important problems among them so generally they will give you questions like this you can just remember or note down number 1 for the projection of this lines they will give you the true length the tl of the line angle made by the line with the hp that is theta angle made by the line with the vp and they will give you one of the end project means how far is that from hp or how far is that from vp so this data they will give you this is one of the very important types of question and second question is they will give you the true length they will give you the print view fpi icon they will give the top view and like this they will give you once again one of the end projectors remember friends in all the questions on lines one of the end projectors will always be given and you will never have a question without the details of one of the end projectors maybe erb if it is pq prq if it is mn m and n one of them they will give you so one question second question friends let's move on to the third question in the third question it could be a point or the end a of a line say a on hp comma b lying on vp this is another important question similarly friends the fourth question you have got a on vp comma b on hp this is another important question then friends there is one particular problem wherein they give you the position or 
the position of A and B. So wherein they give you all this, that is they give you how far is A from HP, how far is B from HP, A from VP, sorry, B from VP, B from HP. They will give you this information. This is the most important type of questions, friend, wherein you will be able to solve around five to six different types of problem. How are they? I will tell you. Suppose they have given this A and A. Say A dash is the front view, A is the top view. Here B dash, the locus of this B say, the locus of B in the top view. Friends, suppose they give you the true length of the line. I can take A dash as center, cut this locus with that given data. You will get this true length. Use that true length data to obtain the true length in the top view. Once you know the true length, you can find out theta. Once you know the true length, you can also find out phi. Once you have this information, friends, you'll be able to obtain a dash, b dash, the front view, a, b, the top view, r. Similarly, friends, in the same question, wherein they give you all this data, like uh, the low side, both the points, suppose you have got the xy line, and you have what's called vp by hp mod here, you have the locus of A, locus of B is here, friends. They can simply give you front view, loci of both the ends and the front view. You get this point B dash, this is A dash. Draw a vertical line from there, you get the point B, join A and B, you will get the top view. Once you have the front view, you have the top view, you can always obtain the true length of the line and the inclination made by the line with HP and VP. And also we can measure what is the distance between the end projector. So this is very important question with the uh, end projectors given. You will be able to solve so many problems on it. Friends, you need not bother and uh, you just go through my YouTube playlist. And uh, by name Dr. M. H. N. under that you will see a playlist is there separately for lines. There are about one and a half dozen problems. And you can just go through all this in one day. You can practice them in one day. So friends, here coming to the examination, you can spare not more than 20 minutes. It's easy because there will be only four lines. A dash B dash, A dash B1 dash. Then A B top view. A1, B1, the true length in the top view. And you have to take maximum 20, 25 minutes to solve this. Because remember friends, in this subject engineering drawing, practice is a must. So even if you know the solution for all the five modules, and if you are not able, if you do not have sufficient speed to complete those problems, all your effort goes as a waste and you will not be able to get good marks. So what is to be done? Whenever you get time, like on Sundays, holidays, or some, whenever you have time with you, spend that time for practice. You know very well that practice makes a man perfect. Now friends, the videos I have is around 20 videos in my YouTube channel link. So, there cannot be any question beyond what all I have taught here. Now friends, let's move on to the planes. Planes or the laminae is another easy chapter. So friends, in this particular chapter, you have got max marks of 10 to 20. And again, you cannot spend more than 20 minutes to solve a problem on either the plane or the lamina, it means one and the same. Friends, lamina is a thin surface, a flat surface having any regular shape. So it could be a pentagonal lamina, a hexagonal lamina, a circular plate, a triangular lamina like this. So here you have got lot of problems on lamina and in the videos I have in my YouTube channel, you will be surprised to see that there are 65 problems in the playlist. So basically what is required in there for solving a problem on 
lamina. I will tell you, friends, whenever they say in the question that the lamina is resting on HP, simply place that lamina on HP such that it appears in its true form in the top view and as a line in the front view. Any lamina, it is seen in its true shape in the top view and as a line in the front view. So, friends, here to solve a problem on this lamina, the initial position is very important because you know very well there are there will be generally three different positions. Initial placing of the object, then tilting of the object to some angle, then further tilting that with reference to VP. So there will be three steps. Each step will carry six marks, six to seven marks. And by chance, if you are not able to solve step number two, second and third part, even by attempting the first part, that is by placing the solid. I am telling you it is in the worst case. You should never plan for that. So in that case, you will be able to get one third for the first step itself. So for any problem on lamina, if it has to rest on HP, either on edge or on a corner, the simple position is this, friends. So you can just say, suppose you have got a pentagonal lamina, you just keep like this. See that one of the sides of that lamina, say AB, is perpendicular to VP. This is how it appears in the top view. And friend, you get in the print view a line. That line will have line thickness. Any lamina placed on HP, irrespective of its orientation or inclination with the VP, you always see in the print view a line. Whether it is a pentagon or hexagon or square lamina, whatever it may be. Friends, this is this will fetch you. See, after marking all these, say this is A dash, B dash, this is uh, uh, D dash, and uh, this is C dash, E dash. And if you just darken this, darken this figure, you will get one third of the mark allocated for that particular problem on lamina. Be sure, it is sure. Next friends, he says, the surface is making an angle with HP. It is lying like this, friends, on HP. Surface is making it's something like this, slipping on this. Here, this line has got five points. And hence, any line containing three points or more than that represents a surface. It, if you have got three points on this line, it would have represented a triangular surface or triangular lamina. If you have got 4, it is going to be a rectangle or a square. And if it is 5, it is going to be a pentagon. Next friends, the second tilt is very, very important. So you should be very careful. Any lamina, if it has to rest on one of the sides or edges like this, then on the XY line throughout step number 2 and step number 3, there should be only two points touching the XY. Suppose AB is at the edge. There should be AB in the second position here, AB in the third position touching the XY line. So if it has to rest on a corner, then second position onwards, there should be only one point on the XY line. Suppose this is say C. This should be C dash here, again C dash in the third view also. So friends, suppose I say it is making an angle of 30 degrees with HP. So friends, I will just draw this line again. Say of the same length. Say this length I represent as M. And uh, this is again going to be M. And these points are A dash, B dash. This is C dash. Sorry, D dash. C dash, E dash is somewhere here. This angle they will give you friends here. Again in the top view, you are going to get one more pentagon, but that pentagon is going to be distorted. Friends, at this juncture, I want to give a very important clue. Friends, what happens generally in the projection of the planes, lines and the development, 
what happens generally the students after getting this view say for example in this problem they have read three lines from here five lines from here and what happens they will not know which is corner a which is corner b etc and my suggestion to you all is that whenever you want to mark a point in this view or any other view friends go in order go in a sequence that is if it is a b c d e start from point a so you can write this is point a draw a vertical line from here horizontal line from here so you get that point so only that much you should complete and say this is point a after getting a you have to go to b similarly draw a vertical line from b horizontal from b this is going to be b join that immediately mark it then c d e etc never draw all the lines together all the lines vertical lines and the horizontal lines should never be drawn at a time you have to take points one by one corner a next corner b then after locating corner b you have to go to corner c and so on and so forth friends in this particular problem when they give you this problem there are two methods of giving this problem what is they so one of them is they can give you that theta ask you to obtain that next again they will ask you to draw with this side making an angle or inclined to vp or parallel to vp and so on so friends here what you should do when they give the angle you have to reproduce this line at that angle obtain the property suppose instead of giving this angle they can also give you in the problem that like this the lamina is resting on hp on one of the sides such that the corner opposite to that is at a height of 20 mm so they don't give you angle they will say this is 20 mm above hp so then what you do you draw a locus you mark a point a dash b dash take this length with this center draw an arc you will get the position of point d and also you will be able to find out what is the angle made by the surface of the lamina with the hp so this is the case of a lamina when it is resting on one of the sides or edges on hp friends instead of that they say the lamina is resting on one of the corners on hp so friends whether it is resting on a corner or resting on a side keep the lamina obtain the print view on top view initially then you have to decide how this figure has to be drawn friends i will call this figure as one and that always has to be redrawn such that whatever the condition they have given it has to satisfy so friends in this if it has to rest on a corner what i should do forget about the corner redraw this length m at the given inclination so what i say 30 degree with hp if it is resting on side ab should be marked here if it has to rest on a corner you have to mark the d here so if this is d the opposite side will be ab a dash b dash then you get c dash b dash that's all friend you can keep the initial position as constant whether it is resting on a side or resting on a corner and only the thing you should remember is whenever it is resting on a corner from second position second and third position there should be only one point on xy if it is resting on a side there should be two points on the that is how you verify a problem on this lamina friends this will take hardly 20 minutes 15 to 20 minutes remember like our solids which i am going to teach later on this is going to have three different position initial positioning first till then second till and every step carries marks there will be not less than 20 marks for a problem on this lines in any of the university examination papers and friend i have told you already there are 60 papers in my 
YouTube link. You can just go to them whenever you find time. And I have given explanation in a very simple language which any student or tutor can understand in a very easy way without anybody's support. Friends, I have completed this first. Second portion also we completed. Friends, the third part, that is the third module, is projection of solids. Friends, generally no student can take or obtain a good mark in exam if he omits this chapter. Because solids generally will have a mark not less than 20 to 30. That is to say, in other words, it will carry one third of the total marks allocated for that subject. And every one of you should never miss to answer this. If you miss this question, then there is no chance of getting good marks like 90 plus out of 100 in the examination. Friends, you can have an allocation of 50 minutes, say almost one hour to solve a problem on solids. Generally, it is going to be a pyramid most of the cases or could be a prism also. It could be a pyramid or a prism or a cylinder or a cone. So, if it is a prism, you will have a lot of lines coming from the, in the vertical direction also in the horizontal direction. And to make this very simple, I will just take up the example of a triangular pyramid and a triangular prism and I will tell you how to place them, how to read the problem, how to get the data and analyze. Friend, a very simple example I will take up and this example should be able to help you to solve any of these problems and pyramids or prism. Say friends, I have got a triangular prism and a triangular pyramid. So, I will write two problems separately. Suppose I have got a triangular prism. So, I will mark this prism like this, you know, one of the sides should be perpendicular. And this is how, I have taken up this example because it will have lesser number of corners. Say this is A, B, C. After marking A, B, C, go to the top. A dash, B dash, C dash. Remember friends, even marking is very, very important. If you go wrong in marking, you will never get the projection from the second step onward. So first I have marked here ABC to the given side. Then I have projected here to the given height, whatever they give you, say height H and the side, say some length. And after marking here, you should come back downward. This is A1 dash, B1 dash, C1 dash. And again here, AA1, BB1. C1. Exactly in the center which you obtain by bisecting any two adjacent sides, you can have that marked here. So this is O dash and O1 dash. Friends, if it is a problem on a triangular prism, if you write this, you will get one third of the mark, around eight marks. Whereas is a triangular pyramid, a square, whatever it may be. Same problem. Friends, let me take up the case of a triangular pyramid, the procedure is the same. So you have to write this triangle here, mark it as ABC, mark that base by projecting these lines. You are going to have A dash, B dash, C dash. Then locate the center, join that to all the corners. From there, write a vertical line perpendicular to XY. And after writing that, friends, write a line like this. So friends, here this is the height H again. And I will tell you in the print view what each of the lines indicate. Now friends, whenever you place any of the solids on HP, whether it is a prism or a pyramid or a cylinder or a cone, whatever it may be, the axis of the solid is going to be perpendicular first of all. So here this O dash O1 dash is the axis and that is perpendicular to HP. Similarly O dash O1 dash is the axis for the same 
triangular pyramid and that is again perpendicular to HP. So this is the analysis you think. Friends here, the last line whatever you have got here has got four points namely B dash, C dash, B1 dash, C1 dash, four points. If you have got three points, it will represent a triangular surface. If you have got four points, it represents a rectangular or square surface. So friends, I'll write down here, it is a rectangular face. So here, you also remember, this rectangular face is parallel to the axis. Similarly, friends, let us see here, this last plane here represents, friends, one of the slant edges because a pyramid will have slant edges depending on the number of sides of the base. If it is a triangular pyramid, you will have OA, OB, OC, three slant edges. And here, friends, this represents slant edge. Next, friends, the second position I will tell you what they will ask. Suppose in the prism, they say that the axis is at 40 degrees to HP. Now, the axis is perpendicular to HP and it has to be redrawn such that, friends, this particular axis is at an angle of how much? That is at an angle of say 30 degrees to HP. Friends, what happens? I have seen while constructing this figure, what students do? They will take out this at random somewhere and this object will be above the xy line, it won't touch. It has to touch necessarily this xy line. How to get that friends? How to get this, you see? This is the axis, this is the base of the solid. The base and the axis of the solid are perpendicular to each other. So if this is 60, the base is going to be at an angle of 60 degrees. So 60 plus 30 is 90 and this is 90 because the total angle in a triangle is 180 degrees. Now friends, you can see here that the axis is inclined to HP, inclined to HP or for the same problem, they can say rectangular surface, rectangular face is inclined to HP. It's one and the same because they are parallel to each other. But that is not the case in case of a pyramid. Let's see friends, here the object is resting on this corner, say here. So if we treat like this friends, what happens? The object will rest on one of the corners, that is C. Again in the third position also, C will be on the X, Y. This is A dash, B dash and this is O dash. You know the O1 dash. And friends again here, if the axis is making an angle of 30 degree, this line, the base ABC should make an angle of 60 degree. This is 60 and this is going to be 30. This is how we can. So friends, you know the first position. You know the second position, third position is going to be very simple and all these three steps carry equal mark. You are going to have three figures in the print view above the XY line, three below that. This is one set, second set, third set. Similarly, in the cones or pyramids, you are going to have the same number of figures. So in the projection of solids, totally there are going to be six figures, three representing the different positions in the front view and three in the top view. Friends, this is a very important step. And now friends, you may ask me, sir, when to place the object like this and when to place this, whether it is a prism or a pyramid. Friends, whenever any prism has to rest on one of the edges of the base or bottom face, if it has to rest on one of the edges of the bottom face, the bottom, bottom face, then you have to keep the object, you will be safe. And similarly, if you find that this triangular prism has to rest on rectangular face on HP. So when it rests on rectangular face on HP, what is to be done? What are the figure you have got here? 
has to be redrawn by rotating through 90 degree so that you will have on this line BC B dash C dash B1 dash C1 dash four points will come in there. For the same problem, if it is the case of a triangular pyramid resting on the triangular face on HP, so you should write the figure the other way. So AB should come to the right side and the C should come to the left side in the first position itself. So you can just write it the other way. And triangular surface on HP means what? So suppose you are taking O dash, A dash, B dash. It has got three points. If it is red, turn the other way. You can just make it rotate on the ground. And here, one important tip or a important thing to be remembered here, friends. In a hurry, what happens? The students will not go through the complete problem on any of these models. For example, if it is a problem on a solid, many times, many students get confused and they will not know whether the question given is on a pyramid or on a prism. So you have to be very careful. Remember friends, in place of prism, if you are doing a problem on a pyramid and even if everything is right, you will not be given even one. So that means you will lose the chance of scoring high marks. And you may just clear the paper with minimum mark. So go through the problem. When it's given, the question paper is given to you. Go through the problem slowly, twice, and then see whether the question given is on a pyramid or on a prism. Then go ahead with the procedure. And this is very, very important. And every one of you, should remember. Friends, as I told you before, the solids carry 20 to 30 marks. In some universities, it is even goes up to 40 marks, more than 40% of the syllabus in that. So, this you cannot leave at any cost. This is the question which will fetch you very high ranking in that particular subject. Friends, for these solids, in my channel there are 50 plus video and you can just imagine there cannot be a question which can be asked beyond what all you read in my particular youtube channel so friends let's move on to the development friends here development is another simple chapter easier than that of the solids so, this chapter also you cannot miss. What are the types of questions they will ask you in the development? Friends, generally, questions are asked on, you can be sure of, the pyramids, cones and cylinders are the best choice of examiners. So, they will ask you to draw the development of the prestum of a square pyramid, or the prestum of a cone. What is the meaning of prestum of a square pyramid? Friends, if you have a pyramid like this, and if it is cut by a section blade, that is a blade, a sharp blade, perpendicular to VP and parallel to the base, the portion that is below the section plane, this is a section plane, below that is called the prestum of a square pyramid. Similarly, for a hexagonal pyramid, you will have a similar pyramid. If it is a cone, we call it as the prestum of a cone. But the same pyramid, if it is cut by a section plane inclined, we call the portion below the section plane as a truncated pyramid or a truncated cone, etc. Friends, to solve problems on these developments, you have to have on the examination, do not take more than 45 minutes. 40 to 45 minutes. In fact, if you have good practice, you can just complete in 20 25 minutes and spare the remaining time for completing other problems or extra problems you can work out. Friends, here, generally in the examination, they will give you the questions on the development where it is cut by 
exception plane inclined to HP when the solid is resting on HP with a different orientation. It could be one of the all the four edges equally inclined to VP or one of the edges parallel to VP and so on. All that you would have learned in the previous module, the solid. So if you know solids, how to draw the projection solids? That development is not an issue at all. You can easily score this much. I will take the simple example of a say square pyramid which is cut by some section plane. I will explain just a simple problem. Friends, you have a square pyramid. The top view of that is a square with a diagonal joint here and the height is given to you. You will be able to draw different view on top view. So I will say this is A, B, C, D. All these from solids only. This is A dash, B dash. C dash D dash. This is O dash and this portion is O1 dash. This is O comma O1. So if you are able to mark correctly. In this case, one of the sides of the base or one of the base edges of this pyramid is perpendicular to VP or normal to VP. Suppose say this is cut by a section plane inclined at 45 degrees to HP bisecting the axis of the solid. Say the solid is having 80 millimeter height and bisecting means you have to mark this point at a distance of 40 millimeter from the vertex or 40 millimeter from the base and this is the section plane. So first of all you have to locate the object, place the object, then part the section plane and you have to mark yes and yes with a dark or bold mark below that. And then friends after marking that you will have to have what is called the retained portion because generally whenever this solid is cut the upper portion is thrown out and we are going to have the bottom portion retained for the purpose of development so you have to darken like this now friends how to obtain the development of the square pyramid friends here you can see that none of the None of these edges, OA, OB, OC, OD, give the true length of the slanted. Remember, developments are always drawn to true size or actual size. So in such problem, first of all, you have to find out the true length. Here, none of these edges are parallel to XY. So what I do, I write a horizontal line and take this length like this. Draw an arc to meet here. Project it upwards and this dotted line, whatever I am writing here, is the true length line. So this is the TL, true length of the strand generator. You have to use the true length of the strand to draw the development. How to draw? Very simple friends. Simply mark the point O, write a vertical line or any line at angle. And friends here, taking O as center. This distance has radius, true length, dry an arc. So I will write an arc like this. And that step of four steps, each of 30 mm. 30, 30, 30, and 30. Join all that. Friends, for the pyramids, these base edges are straight edges, like this. Straight edge, straight edge, straight, and straight edge. And here, you have to next see from which point you have to start the development. Friends, here of the total four slant edges, none of them are removed totally by the section plane. That is, a portion of OA is remaining, portion of OB is remaining. So when that is the case, you can start with either A, B, C or D. Let me say I am starting from A, capital A, C, B, C, D, and A. And join all that by straight lines, friends, like this. Now let's see how to mark this. Friends, this section plane SS is cutting OA and OB here. But OA and OB are not the true length. So I'll have to just transfer that to the last generator. Take this measurement on mark on OA and OB. So I am going to mark on OA, on OB, and again on OA. That's the first point. Next, friends, 
This Osi and Ori are also not true length in this problem. So I would shift that to the last generator and take this measurement from the vortex on OC and ORE. So this is going to be OC and this is going to be ORE and that. And for all the prisms, pyramids, cubes, join the point so obtained by straight line. I repeat, for all type of pyramids, the prisms, cubes, you join the points you obtain by straight line. So I am going to join this to the straight line, straight line, straight line, this is straight line. And friends, I can just mark it as 1, 2, 3, 4. You have to go in the same sequence. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 1 because OA, OA, common issue of point 1. So on OA I mark point 1, on OB I mark point 2, on OC I mark point 3 and O4, that is ODI mark point 4. And friends, the portion below that is available. The base is intact. The base means this one. AB, BC, CD, DA. This portion is 1 to A, 2 to B is remaining. That is existing. 1 to A, 2 to B. Next, this is 3 to C, 4 to D. It's also remaining. So friends, this is how we will say, we can mark it as P and say development of P, the complete development. And here it is necessary that you will have to retain all this construction line, 0 to A, O to A, O to 1, O to 2, O to 3, O to 4 should be. And this arc I have drawn here should be shown very thin. And remember friends, the neatness of drawing also plays a very important point and in some of the examination papers in some university some marks are allocated for the neatness and you have to make use of lesser use of the eraser so that your drawing will look very nice arrows should be written very neatly dimensioning should be done properly correct usage of pencils is required for all the dark lines or visible lines Make use of HP pencil. Friends, I have just given a simple example of a square pyramid cut by a section frame which is inclined to HP. And generally, not only square pyramid, any pyramid you have, the usual question they ask in the examination is the object resting on HP cut by different section planes. It could be horizontal. It could be inclined to HP and normal to HP and so on. And you need not bother because I have the maximum number of problems on this particular development. Lot of problems, at least say 10 to 15 on each type of these problems. So there are a lot of problems on the prisms, pyramids, cubes, cylinders, etc. And you need not go through any other uh, textbook also for that matter. You can just go through this. And friends, if you are thorough, I told you, if you have got thorough practice, hardly 30 minutes are required to complete this particular problem in the exam. But you can take up to 45 minutes to solve this problem on the development. Friends, isometric projection. Isometric projection usually carries the same mark as the top the development chapter. Here friends, if it is generally, you will have uh, in some of the universities, say one object placed on the other, something like this. You have a square block on which you keep a sphere. You have a circular block on which you keep the prastam of a square pyramid or the prastam of a cone. And you have got simple blocks also. We have got a cubical block in which you have got some tapering surface, some cutouts, etc. So, for this, what you should do? If you go through my uh, this link or the playlist of my video or any others, doesn't matter. Here I have got 40 plus problems on isometric, which will give 
a detailed insight into this particular subject and all these problems are explained and by solving this you will not have any difficulty to get 20 to 30 marks, say 25. So if you are very thorough in ISO development, you can score 25, 25, solid 25, 75 out of 100. But I want every one of you to answer all the modules as per the examination pattern and score very high marks. Friends, this is all I would like to say in this video. Please go through this video once or twice or thrice and just recollect what all I have taught you in this. And friends, do not skip the video anywhere in between and this video is going to be of some benefit to you only if you are seeing the complete video from the beginning till the last. Friends, if you like this video, share the information about this video and about my YouTube channel link with all your friends without fail. Wish you all best of luck. Have a wonderful day.